right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over two different articles covering the so-called attempt for the media to try to normalize open relationships and the poly type of relationships. And as you guys are well aware, these type of situation scenarios always lead into disaster, particularly obviously for people that obviously didn't start the relationship with like that. And yet the media is trying to push this thing. And I've been noticing this more and more as time goes on. Now, there's two articles here I'm going to cover here. The first one is from the Wall Street Journal. So this is a serious, serious publication. And the other one is from the New York Times. Big surprise there. Both talking about, both articles focusing on, uh, each, is cover, each is focusing on a woman who I believe is in her 50s, married. And of course, she's the picture is being painted like this is normal or this is becoming mainstream. And she's the hero doing this type of thing with the loyal, loving, supportive husband who's going along with this nonsense. And I believe both, at least definitely the New York Times one, is an author writing the book about how, about this, the adventures and all that type of thing. And as I said countless times in uh, videos I've been doing for four years, because it's been almost four years now, we're living in Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. And it's so sad to see the destruction of the nuclear family, and this is only making things worse. Now, the only time these open relationship scenarios work is if both parties at the beginning of the relationship agree to this terms. But what happens is, as you see articles like these popping up in the mainstream media, attempting to normalize and push this on the public like it's normal, and you have people reading these things, particularly the women, thinking, hey, seems like it's becoming normal. Maybe, maybe this gives me a free pass to, you know, bring this up to my husband and then I can start hooking up with that cute guy down the hallway I've always liked. Or if a gal's cheating on her husband already, I can bring this thing up and, uh, you know, convince him to do this and I can then just continue what I'm doing guilt-free. These types of things. So this is dangerous material. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm 100% for freedom of speech and freedom of the press, but yet, look what this type of thing does. And people think I'm dangerous. Or people like me have channels and talk about what I talk about is dangerous. But anyhow, at least I'm not fooled by this nonsense. And I know you guys aren't fooled by this and not buying this. But I think it's important to be aware of things. I know normally I don't normally I stick to personal stories, but every once in a while I like to cover some articles, what's going on now, and uh, give my take on it. So the first one from the Wall Street Journal is titled Polyamory, Lots of SCX, Even More Scheduling. Open relationships are having a moment. Who has time for this? Says here, Kitty Chambliss is already planning her Valentine's Day. Her husband will make ravioli and roasted vegetables. She'll bake a cheesecake. Then she'll set a table for three. Her husband and her boyfriend. Back to the husband for going along with this madness. It's one thing if she's going out with other dudes. That's bad enough, but actually like sitting down having Valentine's Day dinner. What they're not saying is, hubby's a cuck. You may have noticed that polyamory is having a moment. Pursuing multiple romantic, emotional, or S-word relationships with the permission of all the involved, known as consensual non-monogamy, is increasingly out in the open as adherents tout that they see as the benefits, such as more opportunities for emotional support and connection as well as SEX. Whatever happened to one person you're married to and raising children with, but no, everybody is selfish, 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 and it's all about me, my wants and desires. And overwhelmingly, who benefits from this type of situation? The wife. There are challenges, too, from the mundane calendars to the accidental. First, there's dating. Just when you thought that you'd put the hell behind you, it's expensive restaurants, hotels, cute outfits, and even condoms add up. The scheduling can make a military planner sweat. More relationships mean more drama, from in-laws to breakups, not to mention the lack of sleep. So the whole paragraph covers all the drama involved. Well, guess what? Last time I checked, a certain gender loves the drama. I know what you're thinking. Who has time for this? Only mental people. Plenty of people, it turns out. 22% of Americans say they have engaged in consensual non-monogamy, which is also sometimes called ethical non-monogamy, at some point in their lives. And according to a nationally respected study by researchers at the Kinsey Institute at the Indiana University, that's almost the same percentage, 23% as people living in the U.S. who have a bachelor's degree at their, at their highest degree. So again, according to this research, it says here uh, 23%. They've been thinking about this whole thing. And where do you think they're getting these ideas from? You know, it's one thing to think, like, you can window shop, if you will, but actually want to make it into practice. 
And remember, guys, if you've been watching me for a long time, how many stories have I covered? In four, I mean, it'll be four years on YouTube by the end of February. 2,500 videos on open marriages, open relationships, poly crap, and a disaster. Complete disaster. Many more think about doing it. Research on S-word fantasy shows that nearly one-third of people in monogamous relationships report that being in some sort of open relationship is part of their favorite S-word fantasy. 80% of those people said they'd act on opportunity given the chance. They're saying 80%. Who, who, who's conducting these polls? And who's being polled? You know? I mean, my dad, who was a political junkie, a news junkie, told me in his entire life he was never polled. Not once. And I find that very funny because my dad lived to be 97 years old. May he rest in peace. Who's, who, who's, you know, collecting the information and tallying it up and everything here? Uh, this probably isn't even the first thing you read about the subject lately. A spate of podcast books and social media accounts with hundreds of thousands of followers has brought the poly to dinner conversations and coffee shops. Of course, coffee shops. Molly Roden Winter, a wife and mother who lives in Brooklyn, New York, writes about her struggles, self-exploration, and busy XS life in More, a memoir of open marriage. The book published this month has received so much attention, much good, some judgy, judgy, that when I called her husband, Stuart Winter, for an interview and asked how he was, he blurred out, losing my will to live. Oh, imagine that. Being the new face in non-monogamy isn't easy. Before their wedding 24 years ago, Stuart asked his wife to tell him if she was ever tempted to cheat on him. If that happens, he said, he might be okay with her sleeping with someone else as long as she was upfront with him about it. He says, I wanted a chance to fix what was broken, he said. Smack! He told his wife before their wedding that if you ever felt like you wanted to cheat, tell me and maybe I'll let you do it just so you don't leave me. Dude, have some self-respect. Or he enjoys that because they're called cucks. I have no respect for any guy that'll go along with this. Yeah, it'd be nice if you're unhappy that we talk about it, but you're going to tell me a thing about cheating? At that point, then, goodbye. Flash ahead almost a decade, Molly met a man and started obsessing about him. She told Stuart, and he told her to go for it. Smack the Stuart. Have some self-respect. Unless he sees this as like, hey, I'm going to get a whole bunch of chicks now, and it actually happens. Are you out of your mind? I was terrified, says Molly, 51 years old, but I had to see what was there. Then why'd you get married? Huh? And I'm willing to bet you guys it is not just about the SEX. It is about the validation, the unpredictability, the butterflies, the excitement, all that type of thing. I'm sure probably the actual physical aspect is probably very little in the equation. It's all about the drama. Over the years, both spouses has dated, had lots of SEX, and formed long-term relationships with other people. They established rules which have evolved over time. Some early ones that quickly fell by the wayside, no sleepovers, no falling in love, and Stuart wanted Molly to share details of her encounters and what she enjoys so he could learn more about what she likes. He wants to know details about how big that dude you know what is or what that guy did to her. Are you kidding me, dude? Again, this is why I think cuck. And notice he said that they had rules and they all fell by the wayside. I love when they, in these stories is always going to have rules. No sleepovers. And then there are sleepovers. No uh, hooking up in our house. And then he walk guy comes home and sees the wife in bed with Tyrone. No f catching feelings. Well, sooner or later, people are going like, to get feelings for someone they're having relations with. It's ridiculous. Uh, he says, uh, the couple has confronted jealousy, tried therapy, learned how to process feelings, and talk about their arrangement with family, friends, and their sons, 18 and 21, and they plan to stick with it, at least for now. Molly says it's, it's capitulated our marriage to the next level. So they have kids. You know, it's, it's bad enough this goes on with a married couple, and it's usually sprung on the guy, but if you have kids doing this whole thing, you know how messed up that is for the kids? And, I mean, talk about selfish. But again, Sob and Gamora 2.0. Now it says here, yes, there's research. Most of the time when people talk about consensual non-monogamy, they take one of the two extreme perspectives, says Justin Laymiller, a social psychologist and research fellow at the Kinsey Institute who studies S-word behavior. They say it will never work and that it's morally wrong. Or they claim that it's morally superior, more evolved way of being. The truth is somewhere in between, he says. Well, seeing how effed up our society is right now, 
and seeing how the kids are and all these households where kids are being raised in single parent households and you throw this into the mix, what children need is stability. And there is nothing stable about mom going out one night with this dude and dad going out this night. And, and who's there with the kids? Who's there talking to the kids, being there for the kids, doing things with the kids, right? One soon-to-be-published analysis of 26 studies found no differences in relationship satisfaction, s satisfaction, commitment, or relationship length between those who participate, consensual non-monogamy, and those who are monogamous, says Amy Morris, an assistant professor of psychology at Chapman University and research fellow at the Kinsey Institute, who is lead author in the study. People tend to be more committed to their primary partners in terms of building a life together and have more SEX and more S-word satisfaction with their secondary ones, says Rhonda Malzarani, an assistant professor of psychology at Texas State University and research fellow at the Kinsey Institute who has conducted research on this. In other words, okay, there's their main partner, the one who they married, who typically is, for the gal, the guy who provides and marries her, but she can get all her satisfaction from Chad and Tyrone on the side. And the dumbass that married her goes along with this. As my research is about the downsides of pursuing multiple relationships, people describe challenges such as stigma, lack of legal recognition, communication, and time management issues. R- wrote one participant, communication can be a pain. Uh, Chambliss, this is the woman from the beginning of the story, of the shared Valentine's dinner, has been married for 18 years and with her boyfriend, whom she considers a full-life partner, for eight. The three that lived together in Alexandria, Virginia. <laughs> the biggest moron in that thropple, I guess that's what it's called, is the husband. Going along with this. Notice he doesn't have a chick. A reluctant coach who specializes in consensual non-monogamy, Chambliss, 54, said she enjoys traveling and discussing business with her husband. <laughs> what kind of business? With her boyfriend, she talks about philosophy and takes trips to the beach. She says that she's had arguments with her partners about miscommunication over scheduling. A, a color-coded shared online calendar saved the day. There's been tough talks about deal breakers and insecurity. Uh, let me guess. If you're not going along with this husband, you're insecure. But Chambla says the connection and sense of family far outweighs the challenges. As for sleeping arrangements, Chambla sometimes sleeps with her husband and sometimes spends the night with her boyfriend in his room. If I'm sick of them both, I sleep in the guest room, she says. So this is the family with kids. So they've been they've been doing this for all these years. I, I believe this is the, they're the ones they're talking about who have kids. And the kids are going to see this? I mean, again, does anybody wonder why... Kids are so messed up nowadays. Now, not every household obviously is doing this type of thing, but between single parent households and all the turmoil and the drama going on in this world, and throw this in the mix. I mean, again, kids need stability, not this madness. Now, on to the next article. This is from the New York Times, titled How a Polyamorous Mom Had a Big S Word Adventure and Found Herself. Now, what she found was a lot of dudes weren't willing to pork her. Says here, in her memoir, More, Molly Roden Winters recounts the highs and lows of juggling an open marriage with work and child care. For anyone prone to experiencing secondhand embarrassment, there's a scene in Molly Roden's winter debut, More, a memoir of open marriage, that should come with a warning. Winter is at her home in Brooklyn, and she just had SEX with her boyfriend while her two children slept upstairs. See what I'm talking about here? See how effed up that is? How selfish she is and her husband for doing this crap? Her husband, Stuart, cons- uh, consented to her tryest, but feeling guilty, she dashes naked into the kitchen to text him. Don't worry, she writes. He has nothing on you as a lover. But instead of texting her husband, she accidentally sends the message to her boyfriend, who leaves in a huff, and Lair breaks up with her. Winter, devastated, begs her husband to come home to comfort her. And here we go, another dumbass husband that's going along with this, who is either just too weak to stand up for himself saying, no, we're not, we're not going to do this, or is a cuck. And she's doing this in the house with her kids. I still get a little nauseous thinking about it, said Winter, 51, who was sipping tea in the living room of, of her bright and airy townhouse in Park Slope, Brooklyn, talking about the cringiest, cringiest, most awful things that can happen. Um, how about you, what you're doing again to your family? 
It's far from the only agonizing and breathtakingly candid scene in Moore, which documents Winter's often turbulent experience of open marriage. The resentment and jealousy she felt toward her husband's girlfriends, the flashes of guilt and shame, and the challenges of juggling her obligations as a wife and mother with her pursuit of S-sword and romantic fulfillment. Oh, well, if it's that much, that much of a difficult situation, why do it? Drama, drama, drama. Me, 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 me. Winter is keenly aware that, that people may judge her for the behavior she describes in Moore. No, you think? But she also says she felt compelled to write about her experience, in part because she felt that non-monogamy is so often depicted as something happening on the fringes, not as a lifestyle that married moms pursue. Well, obviously a lot are thinking about it and more pursuing because they hear things like this from books to ads in magazines to blogs to mainstream media doing articles yapping about this and thinking, hey, this sounds like a good idea. And again, as a guy, four years on YouTube, 2,500 videos and countless ones on the subject, they end in disaster. And typically, the guy goes along with it because he's so terrified his wife will leave him. She says, I felt like there were no stories from the mainstream about it, and I felt very closeted, Winter said. It often feels like mothers are not supposed to be S-word beings. Um, guess what, Mom? You can be an S-word being all you want. Knock yourself out with your husband, the guy that you stood before the Lord and said your vows and I do and all that. Knock yourself out as long as the kids don't hear it. But bring another dude into your house and getting porked by the guy while your kids are upstairs? No, that's absurd. It's one thing if the kids were adults and out of the house and it's just you and your husband and both you parties went along with that. would be one thing, but the kids in the house? No. More, which Double Day will release on January 16th, oh good, it's out now, is landing in a moment when polyamory is drifting from the margins to the mainstream. About a third of Americans surveyed in YouGov poll in February 2023 said they preferred some form of non-monogamy in relationships. Well, it's just like the one-third number that was in the Wall Street Journal article I did a moment ago. Along with novels, TV shows, and movies that depict throuples, polycules, and other things of open relationships, there's a growing body of nonfiction literature that explores the ethics and logistical hurdles of polyamory. Recent titles include memoirs like the journalist Rebecca Krantz's 2022 book, Open, an uncensored memoir of love, liberation, and non-monogamy. Liberation, huh? And self-help and inspirational books like The Anxious Person's Guide to Non-Monogamy, The Polyamory Paradox, and A Polyamory Devotional, which has 365 daily reflections for the polyamorous. Good freaking look. Well, you know what? There's a market for everyone. Jessica Fern, a psychologist, a psycho, excuse me, a psychotherapist who counsels people in open relationships, said Winter's account adds a new layer to the growing catalog of nonfiction about polyamory. The more these things are put out there, the more people are going to think, hey, this is normal. I'm going to see if I can get my husband or boyfriend to go along with this. Now I can do whatever I want. And because I know he's so nice and so wants to please me, he'll go along with it. This is why I tell you guys, these things end in disaster. And guys, if your girl brings it up, your wife brings it up, it's over. Because she's already planning who she's already going to hook up with or she's already cheating. You, can have, you must have zero tolerance for this type of thing to end this bullshit. Her story, which is about what it means for a mother to be erotically charged, the story I haven't yet seen yet, said Fern, author of Poly Secure and Poly Wise. Fern knew that there might be a scarcity of books by moms in open marriages because they're simply too busy. When you're a parent and you're polyamorous, who has time to write? Yeah, and you probably also don't have time to spend quality time with your children or your husband because you're too busy getting plowed away by Chad and Tyrone. Winter concedes that polyamory could be exhausting, particularly when she had to balance it with marriage, childcare, and working as an eighth grade English teacher. Oh, those teachers, huh? I was, I'm surprised you didn't say nurse. Exhausting. Guess what comes first? Your family, your husband, your kids, taking care of them, raising them, all that. Not you getting piped down by Chad and Tyrone. If you wanted to continue getting the attention and validation from the guys and the butterflies and everything that goes into that and getting piped down, you shouldn't have got married in the first place, but you wouldn't have a cake and eat it too. And these dumbass husbands go along with us. She says, I did not sleep very much, she said. Well, who has time to sleep when you constantly have cherry Tyrone sausage in your mouth? Opening the marriage wasn't just about doing whatever and whoever she, want, she wanted, she said. 
She had to cast off internalized sexism and her tendency to put others' needs before her own. Issues she worked through in therapy. What began as S-word thrill-seeking led to unexpected self-discovery. Well, it's okay. So she's seeing a, I guess, a therapist or psychotherapist who specializes in this type of thing. In other words, encourages it. She says, I thought non-monogamy was going to be all about the SCX. I thought I was going to be on a, on a big S-word adventure and it was going to be super exciting. And it was until it wasn't. To be clear, more, the book that she wrote, is also about the SCX. Winter recounts her experiments with, okay, disclaim, we're getting some uh, spicy terms here. The 51-year-old's experience with, wait for it, butt plugs, fisting, and ANA, Hershey Highway intercourse. i got to watch what I say here. And catalogs her extramarital relationships, which range from brief encounters in seedy hotel rooms to romantic partnerships that last for years in meticulous detail. Great mom of the year. This is wonderful. Again, the whole doing this when she has kids that need her love and attention. If you wanted all this, get a divorce. Then knock yourself out while hopefully your husband is taking care of the kids. Sam Gamor 2.0. She changed the names of her and her husband's respective partners to protect her privacy, but often leaves little to the imagination. There's Carl, the generous German lover who seems intent on pleasing her in bed, then pushes her to have a threesome with him and his fiance, then ghosts her. She probably likes him the most. There's Laurent, the French-Argentine lover who refuses to wear condoms and likes to have SCX in public restrooms and co-working spaces. A fetish that gets Winter banned for life from a shared office space. And then there's Jay, a 29-year-old with shockingly large package. After they've had unsatisfying SCX, Jay tells Winter he usually can't get the big O from intercourse, but he plans to pleasure himself with the memory of her. You're sweet, she tells him. Good lord. Winters grew up in Evanston, Illinois, and she was in her early 20s when she met Stuart Winter, the man she would marry. He made her laugh and was passionate about his work comp- composing music for TV shows and movies. In 2008, they have been married for nearly a decade and had two young sons when Winter met someone else. Frustrated after an exhausting day caring for their boys while he worked late, she took a walk one evening. A friend invited her to drinks, and at the bar, she fell into a flirtatious conversation with a man. When she told her husband later, to her surprise, he wasn't mad. Instead, he urged her to sleep with her new acquaintance and share the details. Smack to the husband. Now, obviously, this Winters is, as I realize now, the ones they mentioned in the first article. But the point is, you got to be kidding me. Unless this guy gets off on the idea of his wife getting plowed by some other dude, which happens. Why did not guy we go for this? Unless he's thinking he's going to get lucky with the ladies, but he's not. But really, you're going to do this kind of crap and you have a mother with kids? And again, to the guy who's just as bad, you're lying, you're, you're participating in this and you have sons, you have kids, really? When uh, she told her husband, to her surprise, he wasn't mad, he instantly urged her to sleep with a new acquaintance and share the details. Share the details. After Winter started dating, it wasn't long before Stuart also started seeing other women. Though she agreed it was only fair, she was just consumed by jealousy and occasionally asked to close the marriage. Ha <laughs> ha! How many stories have I covered, guys, where the wife brings it up, husband goes along with for whatever reason, usually out of fear, he starts seeing other women, and she gets jealous and thinks her situation is threatened, and she wants to close the marriage, close the open marriage. Stuart confirmed that open marriage was easier for him at first. Molly might have been more discerning than I was at that point, he said, comparing his dating experience to being at a salad bar. In the early years, many of her S-word exploits proved unsatisfying. At the time, most online dating sites didn't cater to polyamorous people, so she sometimes resorted to dating men who were cheating on their wives and girlfriends. Not my finest hour, she said. What do you expect? You got gals out there that claim to be single, and then they're married or in relationships, or and the guys do it too. It's a big mess. Some of her closest friends worried that she was sabotaging her marriage and she would get hurt. There you go. She said, I was worried that she was leaning so heavily into the SEX part that she was not really thinking about the emotional element, said Rebecca Morrissey, a friend of more than 25 years, who added that her concerns faded when Winter started forming healthy relationships with her paramours. In other words, in the beginning, they were very unhealthy relationships, but this whole thing is unhealthy. Eventually, Winter swore off men who were cheating and began seeing people who were also in open relationships, a demographic that became easier to find when online dating added non-monogamous to their menus. Even then, options were limited. There were so few people that I kept getting paired with, 
Stewart's, with Stewart, she said. Winter and her husband struggled with when and how to tell their sons about their arrangement and wanted to wait until their children were mature enough to handle it. That plan failed when their oldest son, then 13, saw his dad's online dating profile on his laptop and texted his mother in panic, asking if they were in an open marriage. Her youngest son found out in a similar way a few years ago when he was 14, she said. So pretty sad that 13-year-olds know about open marriages and that type of thing. See what I mean? Right there, that the kids are already traumatized by this whole thing. By now, her sons, who are 19 and 20, are blase about their parents' SEX lives. Her oldest has read her book and told Winter he skipped some of the nitty-gritty sex, sex scenes while her youngest chose not to read it all, she said. Yeah, now they're, now this is what they, they're growing up to, and now these guys are probably going to have a hard... Their attitude probably towards relationships or marriage are probably right out the door, and who can blame them? It took a few years before Winter felt comfortable re leave, re revealing the details of her open marriage to her larger circle of friends and family. When she told her mother about her adventures in non-monogamy, she learned more about how her parents, who had been married for nearly 60 years, had an open marriage. So this goes to show you these types of things, cheating and all these types of things, they happen long before the current time now, except right now it's more glorified and everything like that. I guess the acorn doesn't fall far from the tree. Her parents were a bit uncomfortable with the intimate details her daughter shares in her memoir, but ultimately endorsed the book. They said in a video interview, for the most part, this is from one of her parents, I totally approve what she was saying, though she noted that she was put off by the raw S-word detailed descriptions. You can't tell me that, number one, the reason there are these detailed S-word descriptions in the book is because that's because SEX sells, let's be honest here, and she's an author in the business of making money and selling books. SEX always sells. But also, it's a thrill. For his part, Stewart is enthusiastic about the memoir, but worries that people will think he manipulated his wife into opening their marriage. Um, I'm not seeing it that way, dude. All my reservations, to be perfectly honest, are, are being I'm being selfish, wondering how this is going to make me look, he said. Moore ends in 2018 when Winter's boyfriend, whose wife had recently divorced him, broke up with her after she turned down his ultimatum to end their, her own marriage. Winter was heartbroken but moved on and has other serious romances since. Even though she's 51 years old, here's the deal, guys. The reality is this, is that if a woman is remotely attractive, not overweight, and has definitely bathed or showered that day, some guy is going to want to nail her. So she's not going to... She's 51, so she's probably got some young guys for some cougar action or older guys, or just plainly just hookups. It's going to happen. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all pigs, and most guys... You know, as long as nobody, their buddies don't see some of these ugh, who they're hooking up with, they'll do it behind the scenes. Just they'll, they'll make, make sure she leaves before the sun rises or something like that. Uh, she's grown more confident that her marriage of 24 years has benefited from the outside relationships. She's mulling another book about her open marriage, Cha Ching, which will be in part to explore the surprising connections she's formed with other women in her life, including Stuart's girlfriends and the wives of the men she dates. So all the ones that read the first story and that really enjoy the, the spicy stuff are going to come back for the girl-on-girl -girl action. From a business perspective, she's going to make money. For now, Winter is bracing herself for the impact the book will inevitably have on her and those around her, but, but she seemed undaunted. She said, I've been spending a lot of time calming everybody else down. She said, this doesn't feel like something I need to be afraid of. Well, there you go. So two articles showing, and the media is promoting this. It's one thing if it's a blog or a magazine or it's quick, but I'm talking mainstream, Wall Street Journal, New York Times, and more of this is going to pop up and all it's going to do is just make get people think maybe this can work. And then more and more articles and stories will be written online. I'll be covering them, showing how disastrous this is. So guys, if you're watching, if you're new, if this video caught new people, new audience here, because you never know, these things don't work. Don't Guys, if you're new to this channel and just found this article and you're like, who's this? jackass in the car and his sunglasses reading this article don't even think about this your girlfriend or wife brings this up it's over because she's already either cheating already or planning it out planning it and believe me if she has no problem with you hooking up with other dudes she's not in love with you period no woman truly loves her guy would ever do this and the impact on kids and all that i mean good god this is why i say so i'm going to 2.0 anyway guys that'd be good to throw in a news article every once in a while to show you what's going on here have my commentary all right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And, guys, you find a good article you want me to cover or your own personal story you'd like me to share and cover, 
definitely email me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just give me some time to get to it because I get tons of these all the time. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.